up, y'all? Uh, this is the first episode of the Journey Podcast. Uh, I got my guy Femi Lujabi here. Thank you for coming. Well. Appreciate you. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, so pretty much, we just want to, you know, get people's stories out there and you know tell their journey with life and sports, of course. But uh, Femi, right here, at one point, 2017, 2018, was the nation's leading scorer for division one college basketball so if you looked at the leaderboards it was Femi Lujabi and then Trey Young right under him for a majority of the season so um this guy definitely is a big time you know basketball player professional overseas now so uh I really think uh you know this would be a good one so uh what's up fam how you been during the uh quarantine everything quarantine uh Honestly, just been trying to find ways to stay in rhythm and stuff. Uh, it's been kind of hard, but I think quarantine kind of affected us all in the same way. So, right. you know, everybody just kind of dealing with the same thing. Definitely. Um, yeah, that's about it. Especially right now with the season closing in, just trying to get back into shape. Just, yeah, definitely. Yeah, get ready for when it. When you're supposed to go back? Right now, the target date is August 15th, but with the travel ban and everything, we're trying to see how it works. So, they're trying to get like a whole bunch of like FBI fingerprint scans and stuff to like right. get over to you gotta push get it through. And shit? Um, not not COVID tested. Probably once you get to the airport, they probably do like a temperature thing, but okay. uh, just like like background checks and a lot of stuff like that because they're they're pretty strict on the Americans not coming in right now. But right. with a visa, I think you kind of get a little bit of uh, leeway. And stuff. That's tough. Yeah. But uh, so like, have you been you know like keeping in shape? Like you ready to go? It's been 50-50. I've been on and off, man. It's like, especially right now, it's like kind of hard to get, you know, gym access at times. Uh, so it's pretty much just based on the week. So when I do play, I still feel like I'm in good rhythm right, and everything. Yeah. But, you know, it's always time to sharpen up and everything. But that's, uh, I'd, I'd say I got some work to do. Yeah, so, yeah, but. Man, definitely. We all doing shit. My shit is I'm messy as hell. <laughs> I felt okay yesterday. Like, yeah. Playing, but. I know, I feel you. I, I know. Okay, but not, not what I want to yeah. be. Yeah, no, nasty. But, um, nah, so, like, obviously, this shit has been, you know, your life, you know what I mean? Like, for the most part, like, and you, you know, ran with it. So, like, I just want to know, like, like, who put a ball in your hands? Like, why, like, why basketball, you know? Honestly, truthfully, I've been infatuated with basketball ever since I was about, like, four. I know, I used to have, like, the, the old hoop just on the top of the driveway. Right, right. Right there. And, like, literally, like, I would just go outside and shoot. And, like, I shot on it so much to the point where the fucking the rim broke <laughs> off the shit. So, like, literally just playing, like, one-on-one against my dad out there at times and stuff like that. And then I was always, like, the younger kid who who was always with the older kids just because I was just right, advanced right. as far as, like, the basketball world. Even though, like, I wasn't tall yet. But it was just like yeah, it was when just did a skillful you, when did thing. You hit your growth spurt? I, I got honestly, I shot up six, what is six or seven inches in the summer. So it was the That's summer, crazy. going into ninth grade. So you went from what, like six one, six two to six eight? No, I went from like five, like oh shorter, like five. It was like five eight to like six four, some shit, like five nine to six four. That's deep. Literally, like I didn't even realize it until everybody was saying it for real. Like once I went back, that happens so deep. Yeah, no, it happens quick. And that, it kind of um. It kind of transpired like just it, it helped because I went from being a guard to being a yeah, exactly. So that the ball handling carries over, the shooting carries over. Nah, and it shows like yo, yeah. I was, like with big men and shit like like they don't have footwork like you do. Yeah, they so. can't really move like you do. So no, that's why it's an advantage. Yeah, no, honestly, it is. So. It definitely is. Like Ant Davis did that. Scotty yeah. Pippen did that. Yep. Uh, who else had a growth spurt? A lot of it happens a lot. I'm not gonna lie, it happens a lot. Just a matter of like how much they grew though. Right. Even like CJ McCollum, remember? You know, like that yeah, little picture. Yeah. Little. He was. Yeah. He was tiny. And that was a freshman. But he, he was, was probably tiny. like four or something. I mean, he's six two, six three mm-hmm. now, but still like. He is tiny. Skin if he's and bones five too. seven, he's not five eight. He don't go to like he don't go to the league. Yeah. You know. Like, Especially right now in this era, they yeah. they want big. Yeah. No. Nah, he like six three is like a perfect height for him. Like. So. That's tough. He. You gotta be good to get in the league at right. 6'3 right now. They want 6'6 six, six point guards and yeah, yeah it's yeah. That's the game, the evolution of the game is crazy right now, man. So, like, in high school, like, when did you realize like that like, you can make money doing this thing? Like, when you really realized it was like, all right, like I gotta lock in and you know, like you realized um, that this shit was gonna like, you know what I mean? Like, honestly, it didn't really click 
for me, like as far as like the whole money thing, right? Until college came about. Really? But, so high school wasn't even a thought. Um, it was like you know what I'm saying like I, I pursued it, but it was it was like it was a like a reality like once right. the whole college thing happened. So like at first it was just kind of like like yo like this is what I'm doing like this is what I'm pushing for like you know I believe in myself and then I knew I'd get there, but it was like I seen like the just the stones turning and like it actually starting to you know shape and like it's like it, I'm setting myself up and everything's falling into line with that. But um um i would say high school wise once i like because just working out with jerry and everything yeah. and when you get in there and you're playing against pros and you're holding your own right. especially at a young age i'm like yo like you I, can do it yeah, yeah like so yeah and there, like you come in there working out with like michael k gilchrist then come back then building the waves in there and then tobias and then like literally back then you just holding your own against everybody i'm like all, all right. right so like you know yeah, this, that's this like, is the top of the top no, right I so definitely like agree with that just like i mean mine on like a lower scale but like even like coming up like in high school shit playing against big names in long island at least like because like, i didn't play you know what i'm feeling like i started late like, i just grew up playing at the park mm -hmm. so like getting to that like going to la and fucking with division one guys like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. showing that i could play like, i was like okay but, like i couldn't even imagine like on that scale where it's like all right and like you have the size feel me like you have the size you have an nba body so it's like damn like you know what i mean like if i could get with tobias my kicker Gilchrist, chris like these are like big wings you know what i mean like, especially when you're when you're 16 you know 17 years old like yeah no that's that was a huge confidence booster uh, so, cool. that, so that was a, a huge confidence booster and then even just playing um going into like the the aau circuits and everything right. so like did you play with again everybody everyone everybody yeah i was a whole i was a you whoever whoever had the best gear yeah, that was yeah, now my main team though was the Panthers. As like like my last okay, like okay. year or two, like once I like finally like realized, all right, you know, I'm committed right. to a team, I committed to the Panthers. So I played with the Panthers, I played with uh, Juice, Juice All Stars, and then I was playing with the players and the Jayhawks. But yeah, yeah. Panthers so, was like my main team though. Yeah, so. no, you was definitely on a good like good circuit though. Like, yeah, man, right especially shit. that that was like the first time I seen, especially Whitehead. First time I seen Whitehead play, that was the first time I ever seen somebody playing. I was like, yo, he's a fucking pro. Yeah, <laughs> he's a pro. Like I like I kid you not. Like I've never seen him complain about a call. It could be like a, a fucked up call. Like he's not gonna waste time when he just walks down. He's fucking strong. Like I'm like, yo, man, he shoots the shit. That was the first time I seen him. I'm like, yo, he's a pro. And just playing with them, kind of just it, it propelled me up more. Cause like it was just it was me, Whitehead, Desi. Oh, they was uh, all your class, right? Own. Yeah. So we all played on Juice. I was our Juice. We had stacked, and that was wow. when the unarmed circuit. So like literally playing with them, like that's where yeah, the I had a game. I had a game. the mentality just flipped. Like it was. Literally, where you come down, lay the ball up, like yo, like I'm coming to tell him, like yo, dunk that shit, man. That shit look, it look, makes it look better. Dunk it. So then I just right. start dunking everything, boom, and then you start just playing physical, just being around him, you know. Especially with the city guys, so you know, Long Island compared to the city, you know, it's it's, it's real different. gritty. It's, it's, it's a gritty different. game. So like, especially like the kids who play on the city right now, and they come back to Long Island, you see it, like it's just a different. It shows, yeah. Yeah, no, it's you a different factor. So, but so that's kind of that that helped propel just being around like talent and then just kind of seeing what playing hard is about i think when i was younger that was my hardest thing the hardest thing for me was just understanding like yo play hard like having a motor and shit yeah yeah because i just always thrived on being way more skilled and just out skilling people yeah, once you get to that level like mm -hmm. the motor is what separates you that's yeah. like for every everywhere i've played and shit like that like the big men that with a motor like the big guys that can move like, and out and you know outrun and outlast the, yeah. the other dude like it shows like that's an extra four or five rebounds a game. Uh, that's an extra six, eight points just off layups. Just oh, running the and floor. That, that's like, huge, especially like especially at a professional. And yeah, that's the L2? difference. Because there, it's it's all, bro. It's numbers. Like they don't even have like they are looking at your points per game, like your efficiency analytics, now. Everything's yeah. analytics, so it's everything's like, analytics. They don't even need to see you play. Oh, he's six eight, two forty, yeah. and he does that. Okay, yeah. They don't like, even well, like like you know. they don't like mid range anything anymore it's because of analytics. Just threes and layups, right? Threes and layups. Yeah. That's, that's like, everywhere you go. Yeah. All right, high school, what, all Long Island, right? Yeah. 20, what, 2014? Um, I don't think I got a 2014 because uh, I they, they said I didn't play enough. Oh, games. that was when you was hurt. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I missed, so I missed 2013, like, all Long Island, and yeah. then y'all won your senior year, right? What y'all win, Long Island? Um, yeah, we were runner up for a state. States, right? Yeah. Who'd y'all be in Long Island? Farmerdale. I think Farmerdale, so. Okay, yeah. I remember watching Farmerdale. That one. Yeah. John Glenn was. The uh, Big Sweet Small School game. Was a, it? A, a division. Yeah, a Big Sweet Small School. And then we played, oh, uh, yep, we played Farmingdale. Oh, yes, Chris. that was with, that was uh, John Glenn with Daryl. Yep. And uh, who else they had? Uh, the, the, the little dude, Keandre. The little Keandre, guard. And then a uh, little, like, 
Chinese kid. The lefty. So, yeah. Yeah, top. no, he was good too. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I remember that was at Whitman. Uh, yeah, I was, think it was, yeah. My year was the year after when we played in the big school, small school, when yep. we played Brentwood. But yeah, no, those games was lit. I remember those. Yeah, no, that was, that was a good one too. I think that's when, was that the year when they beat Amityville and Amityville started doing all the, yeah, 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 yeah. the uh, protests and all that? Yeah. Yeah, no. Nah, oh, that was when, uh, what's his name? Subbed in. When Josh. Josh, yeah. Serrano subbed in for like 20 seconds. Not even 20 seconds. Yeah, not like, even. He, he played like, like the last possession. Yeah. And then they took it from them and they gave it to John Glenn. That was crazy. I was there. It was at yeah. Farmingdale. That's crazy. But, um, so like, obviously you had a good run in high school. Y'all went to states. All Long Island, dude. Was you a thousand point scorer? Not in high school. No? I don't know how many points I had. I've, I've really like to this day. You would have had it though, probably senior year if you. Played. Yeah, to this day, I think like literally, I, I probably <laughs> missed it by like, like four points, maybe. That's tough. Cause it doesn't make sense to me. I, like I, I really think I don't know. That's tough. Yeah. yeah, but I did miss. I missed the majority of my season, uh, the senior year. I think I played like maybe like six, six, seven, eight okay. games. So what happened? Year. Like what? Uh, broken get... tibia. Um, tibia. Yeah, it was funny. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't even want to play. Um, it was at uh, Hofstra team camp. Okay. So, um, literally, like, I always had, like, tendonitis and stuff, especially with the grown pain and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, just being in, and that was before, like, I started lifting and stuff. So, just the right. wear and tear, playing freaking four or five games a day and stuff like that. So, you know, just a build up. And then we won, we won the Hofstra team camp. We beat St. John's in the championship. And then after, it was just the kids on the sideline that we just dunked. Okay. So, like, you know. I heard you, well, you was fucking around dunking, right? Yeah, we were just yeah. dunking and stuff. So, like, literally just coming down dunking, and I went between the legs. So then I missed and I came back to do it a second time. And then when I pushed, it wasn't like on a landing, I broke it, it was on the push. Oh, on the lift off? So it was like literally as I pushed, they said the muscle in my leg was stronger than my bone. So when I pushed, it ripped, Contract. It ripped the whole thing off. So ripped it clean off. Like Need literally. surgery? Yeah. I went straight like literally like, yeah, it's fucked up, man. Um, I remember all I hear is the crack, so I heard. Nah, I, I don't do good with that shit, bro. Yeah. I can't even think about that shit. I was supposed to get surgery on my ankle, and I was like, bro, like, I don't even want to do it. Like, I'll just do the rehab. Like, yeah, nah, nah that's, that shit. I had a sleeve on. If I didn't have a sleeve on, literally, I think like I, I think it Kevin Ware. Skin, yeah, yeah, because it was literally it was pointing up like through the sleeve, that's and then scary. everybody thought I slipped. So when I like jumped, it's like it, I, I went dead. So I pushed, and I just like fell, just boom. And then I was trying to like move my leg and I could not move my leg. Left or right? Left. Jump leg, yeah. So then I couldn't move my leg. And then um it was like Ali at the time was on the team. So okay. Ali was like laughing, like like oh, oh like, you fell. Playing, yeah, right? like, like like oh like everybody just like laughing. Like, I'm like, yo, I broke my leg. They're like, what? I'm like, yo, I broke my leg. Yeah. But like Now you know, like when you break it, you, you know. Yeah, but like, like it didn't like I wasn't panicking or nothing. Like I just I was like, yo, pass my bag. Like I'm probably I put, in shock, right? I put right, my kinda. bag behind my head, like just laid down. <laughs> just I, I had my phone and I'm calling my mom. Like I called my own mom, like, yo, ma, meet me at the hospital. She's like, What? I'm like, meet me at the hospital. Femi, what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm like, meet me at the hospital. So then ambulance comes, they lift me up. Once they lift me up and the blood flow goes down, I'm like, oh this shit's real. This shit starts throbbing and then everything. So they got me in um the ambulance and they shot me up with morphine so because all the bumps wow so this look watch this shit gets fucked up so they shoot me up with morphine in the ambulance i get to the hospital so what they have to do is basically after they take the x-rays and everything they see what's up they're like all right we gotta straighten it and splint it and then the surgeon's gonna be here in the morning so then you'll get surgery in the morning she had to wait overnight yeah but that's tough they had to crack it back into place, right? And they gave me morphine in the hospital, in the ambulance on the way there. So kind of wore off by then? Yeah, but the <laughs> hours, like the time span, was too close for them to shoot me up with any type of drug again. So they had to crack my leg back with, into well, place with last, no drugs, yeah. nothing. Uh, so literally, they cracked it back into place, and once it straightened out, that's when the blood flow went. They put my leg down, I started cursing everybody. Pick my fucking leg up. Like, that shit was, bro, I've never experienced pain and like that. And you're what, 18 at the time? Yep, 17, 18, 17, 18. 18. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, that was crazy. So after that happening, you obviously came, you know, back to the season late. Mm -hmm. And so, like, what was recruitment looking like at that point in time? So, like, before the injury and then after? Um, Literally, it, it, it was bad because um, at the time, that's when I just kind of blew up on, like, kind of like a national mark. Right, right. So, literally, that's when I was getting the, the big time squad, Florida State, uh, Texas A&M. Memphis, Baylor, like literally, like all the schools just coming in, the St. John's, St. Hall's, Yukon's, 
and then literally it was like it it went up because i was playing at my best and then the second i broke my leg like everybody lost it yeah that's I why think, that this is sick it's a business you yeah know what so, i mean like they don't you can't blame them because like that's their livelihood too that's their yeah. job they got they got to make a living off it exactly so it's like but that's tough because like that happens so much you know what i mean yeah the you only people who stuck hurt. around was um the local school so like hofstra you wasn't messing with hot like stony it's like a hofstra stony bro nah. like, killed like four years like actually know? funny story stony Brook told me i wasn't good enough for it. when you was younger and i'm sure they was recruiting um, after after you leaving eight Okay, right? Something like that. Stony Brook was like, he's not, he's not good enough to play. Yeah. And then the coach tried to fucking recruit me into Rutgers when he when he took the job. Yeah, I'm oh, like, Pico, yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah, all right. I think it was assistant. I'm not sure if it was Pico. Well, I think um, he took in the assistant with him, right? No, I'm saying I'm not. I think oh, it was assistant. Oh, the assi- that. oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but um, no, that that happened before I transferred to, um to A&T. But um, oh, gotcha, gotcha. The only people who were left were like. The local schools so it was the stony brook hofstra all the local schools memphis they kept them okay. um memphis wanted me to do a uh a, a grad not a grad year um a prep year oh, okay so they was gonna send so you yeah somewhere. they wanted me to do a prep year and then basically come back we to like recover class, like yeah. i didn't want to go prep like i, I was like I'm man i'm done with high school play, yeah right? like i want to go play collegiate ball so like i wasn't even getting recruited by oakland at the time because I was getting all high major schools. So Oakland felt like it wasn't. So you wasn't even thinking about Yeah, them. so like yeah. they were like, we don't really have a chance. But when I broke my leg, literally, I'm on my surgery bed, and they call me like seconds before I go into surgery. Really? Like, yo, full scholarship, everything. One of the best majors in the country. Illinois? No, uh, Michigan. 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 So literally, right before I went to surgery, Oakland, they they offered me. So that that kind of it was it was kind of dope to me. So that's why I ended up taking that. So I ended up taking a scholarship after like, you know, a week or so, like, yo, like, all right, they offered me, like, they believe yeah. in me, so, yeah. yeah no, at first, that's what, like, I didn't, I thought it was, like, an Oakland and Cali, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, when, when you just hear it, shit, like, me I, too. I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Sorry, Oakland University, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Cali. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, right? Like, hey, we're in Michigan. <laughs> oh. yeah, it was nah, cold, right? Me up. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, nah that's man. tough. That's funny, but, Michigan, um, Michigan's horrible. It's, 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 like, it's brick, man. I've never experienced that type of cold. You're right on the water. So it was like By Chicago, shit, even right? even Chicago. Like when I was in Chicago, Chicago wasn't as bad as Michigan. Like, and they say Chicago's the one like Michigan's. Yeah, no, that's tough. So, they, like what happened? What happened at Oakland? Like, what was, what you did? You did two years there, right? I did two. Yep. Two, so yeah, so what happened? Because personally, I'm not going to, like back then, I knew of you. Of course, like we knew mm-hmm. all of you Long Island, like that was, I wouldn't even mess with Steve, like not like I knew of Steve, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, like. But so I'm just looking from afar, like I would look up, I would always look up like how dudes from Long Island did, like just to see, like I want to mm-hmm. see like how this level competes on a national level, like that I've seen. And like your numbers was kind of low, like the first two years, I'm like, Man, it's I'm not like, there. I thought, like I remember yeah. like, hey, ew, like I played y'all in like the North Sport Fall League and shit, like you, Jamal, like y'all was going crazy. I'm like, bro, like I'm playing with me, Nima. <laughs> like, like on on uh, with Chrissy's team, with okay, Duke, okay, like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Chrissy's team. So like, she used to coach this team called North Shore Mustangs. We're playing. I'm like, bro. So when I look it up, you know what I mean? I see you average like three points, or like not playing that much. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. man, I'm like either like Division One's crazy like that, or like like something got to be going on. Nah, like, yeah, I, I just kind of kind of fell into a bad situation. Right. Uh, I guess when I initially got there, I'm, I'm I just learned this recently through like my mentor and stuff. He was telling me like initially. The talk was they were gonna take me in and they were gonna redshirt me the first year. Okay. But once I got there, I literally outplayed like every fucking body, so right. they were forced to play me. So first game out, I go fucking nuts. Really? First who game out, play? I forgot who it was. It was like a like probably like another like mid major or something. Okay. I had like 19, eight, and like probably like two assists, something like that. All dunks, literally just all dunks. I think I remember. Was that? Did you catch on baseline that yep. game? Like off a, off a fake handle? Yes, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like you, you went baseline right in front. Yeah. yeah, I remember seeing that shit. I was like, so okay, like, I think like that. That's when like I saw that because mm-hmm. that was early. You said right? Yeah, that was that was the first game. First out. game, yeah. So yeah. I remember seeing. That, I'm like, okay, yeah, like he's about to go like go crazy. And then at the end of the year, I looked at the stats. I was like, what the like? like yeah, what the hell yeah. happened? Like, so like, yeah, like first game out, boom. Second game, play well, and then like. It just, I had a freshman, not a freshman wall, but it was just a game. It, it was, we played Arizona, okay. number one team in the country. 
Who they have? Stanley before? Johnson, Brandon Ashley, Nick Johnson, uh, T.J. McConnell, nah, Tarzuski. Nah, yeah, that team was crazy. Uh, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. That team was crazy. Yeah. What's nah, the other guard name? The uh, one he's like on the documentary on Netflix. The like he's skinny guard, tough. Um, he was he was like top he he was like top like twenty in the class at the time. He went to the league or no? No. Plays overseas somewhere. Yeah. Cause I remember like Nick Johnson was my guy yeah. back then, like his ball his life uh -huh. and shit. Like, bro, Nick John, I remember him. Like, he was tough. T.J. McConnell was very like he was a solid college mm -hmm. point guard. Stanley on the wing. Nah, oh, yeah. So that what team, happened that, that, team what, was that nuts. game? That game fucked you up. Bro, I should not shit the bed. <laughs> I shit the bed. Yo, that shit was the scariest shit, Zach. That shit was the scariest shit I've ever encountered, bro. I'm in the shit. Like it's it's like this is like the dim light games. Like we played Iowa State too. I was completely fine at Iowa State, right. and I, Iowa State was the top team in the country. That's when they had George's Niang. They had oh, okay. um, so my boy Sharon was there. Who's uh, he on, man, is he man. The Jazz now, George's Niang. I think was, so. Right? Yes, I think so. Right? Yeah. And then man, man was the point guard, Monte Morris. Okay. Uh, so like, yeah, they were, you know, they were yeah. another top team Big in the country. Team, yeah. I was fine. Like I didn't, but Arizona, like Arizona you walk through the shit, like the fucking facilities is nuts, and then you walk in. Once you walk into the gym, literally, it's like you probably can't tell. You probably can't tell actually, but Arizona. Literally everything but the court, like only the court's lit up, but the court is lit up in like a blue light. Okay. So like the so crowd like is like dim. fucking dark, uh -huh. and it's just like so it's like the spotlights all on there. It's the ESPN game, Bill Wall and all them, like you know, like literally like Bill Wall. We're talking to Bill Wall like, and all that. Loud. This is this can is what hear, caught me. You can hear your coach enough. No, not even no, coach, right? No, our coach got ejected that game and all that. Yeah, that shows bad. <laughs> but um. The like this is what this is what fucked me up. The national anthem is saying so we're all standing for the national anthem, and literally like I'm just like looking, and then all you see is like the colors like in the crowd because like color coordinated, so everybody got on like Arizona colors, and then in the middle of the national anthem, the fucking crowd says a chant, the fucking room shakes, bro. <laughs> I'm I'm like, oh my fucking gosh, bro. That's the, bro. That's the shit people do not get. Like yes. when you're like I've never even been like close to that level but like i could only imagine like people think it's like when they see college basketball and they see people like on espn and shit like like missing shots or air ball or something mm -hmm. oh he sucks he's wet like it's bro, a different atmosphere it's a you different be, level yeah. like you really have to be different to play college basketball like mm -hmm. if you're nice like you know you know what i mean like people know that but it's just like like you know everyday people like that's why people like they judge sports like so like harshly like you don't understand like the actual atmosphere that you're in like could you imagine like a duke north carolina game Duke, North Carolina game. Uh, when I was at um A &T, I used to go to Duke. My set out, I used to go to Duke every week, and I used to chill with them. So I used to work out Cameron and all that. Yo, a month before the UNC game, people had their tent set up out the shit because it's only they only let I think it's a hundred students. Really? So yeah, like it's only like a hundred like student seats or whatever that they let in, and then everything else like they pay for the tickets. Like you know what I mean? They camping out like a month and a half before the game, like in tents, living outside of fucking Cameron. Right. They, they're grilling they got grills out there a fucking court yeah, they put a court up mm -hmm. i'm like yo like it's just nuts like and that, college basketball is different that's man. what i'm saying it's, like so like a moment like that could like like show oh, yeah. you like rattle you and like so what like it affected like moving forward oh or? oh no it didn't affect me moving forward but like my coach kind of used that game as just like a haze over me like right for the rest of the season so oh, like like you showed your ass this game like, the first yeah like, so yeah. like the first i remember like the first possession out like even though like i shook it off you the started? first possession out, uh, you, like, I think first? I started. Okay. So the first possession out, come down or whatever, I end up getting like an offensive rebound. Rodney Hollis is playing on me. I give him a pump fake, <laughs> and then I try to go up over, and he punches that shit. <laughs> Boom. I'm oh, fucked. All right, so that shit got me. And then Tarzuski, I don't know if you remember Tarzuski. That's the big man, right? The German dude. Yes, yes, solid yes, muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solid muscle. I'm putting all my body weight on. I'm a freshman, you know what I'm saying? I'm throwing my whole body weight, and he's just like, this and just like wasn't waiting for real like holding me off with a fucking arm like this bro i'm like yo this shit's real that's funny bro. i'm like this is real so that um after that happened being that especially when i was at oakland i was the only new york recruit that they've had so like i'm the only kid from new york ever went to Oakland. Really, probably. all the recruits is from the the area midwest over midwest there, yeah, area yeah, and north. everything and then they kind of have a connection with um with the high school for which my boy jalen was at at the time too so they get a lot of recruits coming from the high school okay. So then uh, Jalen pretty much played, and then that, that was that. Was that. I just kind of fell into what it was, and it, it was it was fucked up because I deserved to be on the floor. Like, it was weird because he would literally tell me every day, like, after every practice, like, yo, like, you're probably, like, the most talented player on the team. And I'm like, yo, so why the fuck am I not playing? Like, he would tell me after every practice. I'm like, yo, he, like, mind fuck me. I'm like, bro, like, what, what are you saying? Like, if bro, I'm the most talented person on the team, why am I not playing? That's, that, happens, that happens a lot, too, man. 
I'm not one to like try to blame a coach or yeah, stuff nah. like that. Like I, I, I try not. Like when I was younger, at, like when I was my 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 first school, like every like even like prep school high, like you think, oh, it's the coach, it's the coach, it's the coach. And then it's like as you get older, like if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing on the court, like and you're good enough, like. You, you have to force the coach to play you. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Like, As I say, the only, like, what he say, my boy Jamil said, he said the only two people who guard me is, uh, he said something, I think, he said it's God and the coach who doesn't draw the play up. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, so. Like, so that, yeah, that's the way I, it's I, a lot like, of systems. My, like, a lot of kids, like young kids don't understand, like, um, a big, a big majority of your success, especially at the next level, is just making sure you're in the correct system. Like, right. it, it doesn't have to do with a building and everything. Exactly. You can be, you got the most building in the world, but if you're not in a system, that caters to what you do as a player is you're gonna struggle to you know, hundred and that's that's how like, at least it's been like related to me like, mm -hmm. my, like I can't play if I'm just running corner to corner I'm not a catch and shoot you know so yeah. like in the summer so that yeah I play like try to score and you know like dribble and, drive like you like a dribble drive like, offense that's what I'm saying like, yeah. like in college basketball like bro like first guy like I'm gonna be like I'm gonna kick like I'm a real like solid like system point guard mm -hmm. like surround me with some shooters in a big you know what I mean like I make the right play like. But like schools I've been to, like they think you know token white dude just run up and down, run, shoot, shoot corner to corner, yeah. shoot that like we'll give you the green light, like shoot anytime. You, like bro, that's not my game. You know what I mean? Like that was just yeah. never my game. So I could definitely like agree with what you're saying because kid, like people don't see that. Like there's yeah. dudes that excel, like like prosper in certain situations, and they could go to another school in the same conference, play against the same level, and not even play. Mm -hmm. And not even get an opportunity. Yeah. Just because of the way the coach runs it, what the coach sees, what the coach looks for, and like from the outside looking in, people don't see that in college basketball. People don't. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of just um, gray areas that a lot of people don't really understand, especially when it comes to sports and stuff. Especially at this level, like this is NCAA. Yeah, it's, it's a non-profit organization, but they bring in a billion of dollars every year. Uh, how does a non-profit organization net in four billion dollars? Like. It's, it's it's all money but and that's so, like what we were saying yeah, earlier it's, but it's like it's a coach that he's got to he's gonna do what he's it's a longevity is, thing yeah, yeah. so it's, it's gonna provide day. for his family and get him a new house and keep his kids and wife and every you know what i mean like mm -hmm. and i understand too because like at the same time it's like i'd rather like if if we were in a position i'd rather break a uh uh, or burn a bridge where I don't I don't really use as opposed to a bridge that you know is of necessity so if you're getting continuous recruits out of the area I wouldn't tarnish that for the one kid that you got from New York you know what I'm right. saying especially tough. like so I mean at the end of the day like as you get older you kind of understand it I mean it is fucked up but it, hey that's what happened I got the last yeah. laugh though man yeah no, it came exactly. back full circle and that's why like yeah that was like the next thing I was gonna yeah, touch so. on where it's like so Decide obviously after your sophomore year, like it's time to leave Oakland. Yep. Schools is I'm sure hitting you up, and it comes to the point where a school that was arguably the worst in all of Division One. Yeah, they were. Yeah. That year, like the absolute bottom. What they they hire a Long Island coach, yep. Joiner. Recruit you, Aaron, and y'all come in. Y'all redshirt y'all first year. Yep. And then you guys come in and turn the program around like completely. So like Yeah, the year before they, they were no, they were the, the worst. worst. Like I remember seeing like what is it, how many teams are in the country? Like three, three 50, like fifty something like three fifty two. Yeah, so I'll about to say three fifty one. Yeah, think something, something like, like that. that. So I think they were the bottom. Like, no, they were the last team. Yeah. yeah. They they had one division one win and so, it was the last yeah, game so, of the season. Yeah. So what what makes you what makes you choose them? Like Um I I mean It was chess. It was um for one, uh Joiner was a Panther. Okay. So it was kind of like, you know, just like a, a, a family tie per se to where it was like my people, like, you know, my mentor and stuff, like, oh, we got a guy over here, this and that, like basically help him get an extension. And like it guaranteed, I was walking into a place where I was going to guarantee to be on the floor. And that's all I needed. At that point, you're going I was to like, yeah. you're like, I so need I'm to like, right now, I like, need to be on the floor. I need film. Time. That's yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go somewhere where it was. So like, I still had the hostages and stuff. And then, but it's like, I don't have a personal relationship with coaches even though the hops like they love me you know what i'm saying mean anything yeah so it's like i would be um i would be kind of risking not risking it but but like taking a chance a disservice, and being yeah. that yeah being that this was yeah, like nah. my career path it just it was it was i don't want to say it was a safe route as far as me being able to play no there's security like there's security yeah. behind so, the decision and that's bro like people like that keep betting on like there comes a point in time where it's like you gotta like put your pride aside and kind of just be humble where it's like well i gotta at this point i gotta do what's best for me mm -hmm. and like i mean i try like whatever kids like younger dudes i talk to not that i was like some like high recruit or whatever but like 
just the recruiting process and no matter where I feel like you whatever level you play like when you're getting recruited you like you have to go where you want it so that's what like so many kids like make decisions on the name facilities and stuff like that and I'm sure have you been a victim of like I have like I'll, I'll go on schools things and just look at the gym or the facility yeah. and look because you think oh nice facility nice locker room nice gear mm-hmm. you got to be like legit program and like that's that's not always the case you know what no. I mean it's not and I feel like that's uh like was a big decision with you like going to North Carolina a t like yeah low budget yeah because you knew, like, all right, this is going to be the best for my future and my life going yep. forward. So, so like, I want you to touch on that, like, that redshirt year. So, like, what, what was your mindset? Oh, what you was your talk about that redshirt? Oh my! Yeah, gosh. what happened? Like, what was life like then? Like, what was you honestly Jesus. doing? I, I probably hate losing more than anybody, and I wasn't even playing. I, I was, I was redshirting. I, bro, I used to go into the room after every game and, like, bang my head against the fucking wall. Like, that shit used to be, it was so embarrassing to he me. Wasn't like, even playing. Oh, I wasn't even playing. And, like, and, and it was at a point to where, like, a lot of the kids who were playing, like, the dudes at the time, like, it seemed like they were okay with the shit. Like, I'm like, bro, like, like, like y'all in for a rude awakening if this type of energy y'all like, when I'm on the court and shit. Like, it's on, I did what I could, like, as far as just being in practice and just, you know, make sure they're prepared. Like, we would kill them in scouts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Was it you so, and Aaron? Yeah, so yeah, we just destroy yeah. them and fucking scouts, and then just. So that shit was probably fun. Yeah, I, I mean, especially no, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like especially uh with the retro year, just like the the campus life and and being at an HBCU and experiencing the an HBCU, it, it was it was dope, it was fun as hell. So yeah, how is that different to what like Oakland was a PWI, yeah, basically PWI, yeah, and then HBCU, North Night Carolina, and day. like night and day, with what, like everything, the, everything, the, the parties, everything, the culture, it's it's like completely night and day like I'm not gonna lie like as far, out of the three colleges I went to where I could say like just being like a, a student and not an athlete or, or whatever like that I had the absolute most fun at North Carolina yeah. it's yeah. like it's not even up for debate that's good man. yeah cause I mean I like I couldn't imagine it but just even my experiences like everywhere I went like I went Juco twice and I went to uh, UVI yep. all three of those are HBC like all HBCUs for the JUCO level. Like, yep. I was the at Lawson. I was the first white player in school history. School history, that's dope. and like that's a that's like dope. uh like dude from the league went there. Like, they was a pretty like, mm-hmm. in, at least in the southeast, like in Alabama, in the south, like Lawson State was like good. And uh, yeah, bro. So like that was, and I mean like even that vibe was like obviously different than I mean I went to Howard College JUCO in West Texas. Okay. Pretty much all white, like very like you know like rodeo team that type of stuff. Okay. So even like seeing like the the watered down version of just the differences in the small JUCO, I couldn't imagine like Oakland to NCAT. Y'all have like your homecomings are ridiculous. Yeah, like, football team goes undefeated. And you have my football boy, team, yeah. My boy Tariq was on the team at the time when I was there, Cohen for the Bears. And he was on back. the Bears, right? Yeah. So like yeah, we, yeah, we were lit, there. man. Yeah, we we I'm not gonna lie, we were lit. It was yeah, no, it was definitely fun. It was it, it um. I'm very happy I went there, even though kind of like towards the end, shit kind of like downward spiral, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, just like off the court, like not off the court reasons, but um, just like this person who really just agreed to disagrees with the coaching yeah. and stuff like that. But um, so from that point, the retro year, it was just like it was just hard coping with what was happening. Like they were right. on the on the season, they ended up being three and like twenty six. So they beat two like NAIA schools. The first team, game. the first team that they played, they only beat by like four or five points. Like the NAIA, like the, the shit was a game. Like we, me and Aaron, and the shit, like yo, what the fuck is going on? Like we're like yo, you know what I mean? But then, yes. and then they ended up winning uh, the game against the rivals, Central. Central, okay. I, do, I think they, I do remember. Was that a, at A&T? On a game, yep. On a game one, and, and they right? stormed the courts. Yeah, I remember seeing And they stormed seeing the y'all, courts. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing y'all like snaps in this series. That that not it was nuts. Sick. Yeah, storm the courts after. Um, yeah, those get, like HBCU games is always lit, right? With the they got the marching band and all yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Especially the rivalry games, like like Central and yeah, yeah. games are like probably like the biggest games and like the, the Meac, that's, yeah. Right? Even like even in, probably in the East yeah. Coast, at least like just rivalry and just atmosphere and energy. Yeah. So like right off the bat, pretty much, I mean, I was fueled. I just felt like I had a lot to to kind of carry coming into when I was playing. I was like, if I'm not losing, like I've never been a part of a, a program or a team that's had a losing season, has anything like I just I, I've never been. 
and I wasn't about to start, especially in college. Yeah, yeah hey. Oakland, even at Oakland, we were second seed both years out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So and y'all like, had, uh, what's his name? Felder, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, right. K was the point guard. We had, had an NBA. Well, he was the leading scorer in the country, right? Uh, no, second second in scoring behind Buddy Hill and then first in assists. Okay, so. Yeah, like, that's nuts. That's, like crazy, that's crazy. Yeah, like, Trey so like, right right Young Hill. is like, the, yep. at least in the last, what, five, six years to do that, like, be up there in yep. points and assists. Well, Trey, Trey did both. Yeah. So, like, and that, like, that brings you to another thing. So, you transition from the worst year in pro prime, could be program history, to now you and Aaron are on the court and 16, 17 games in. You're the nation's leading scorer over Trey Young. Yeah. You see Femi Lojbi and then Trey Young, one and two. Like. And then my boy Matt was up there too, mascot. Okay, yes, mascot yes, Matt was up there yes. too. Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was probably at like 27, right? Like 20. He was like a like, shot. Points like, per game. Yeah. Yeah, he was like about right there. under y'all. I remember seeing that. So, like, yeah, like that's because I remember even dudes on my JUCO. Remember my boy Mo, the one that was facetiming you? Yep. From, uh, he's from Nigeria, uh -huh. and like, yeah, like he was just because like he would see your name all the time, and he knew, like, because you know what I mean, like, and uh, he he ended up going to Louisiana Tech. Okay. So he played two years there, like, had a good had a good two years, like, he got a good engineering degree, like, he's gonna be set. But yeah, when he used to see your name on there, he was like, because like he would always hear us on Xbox and shit, and then like he would be like, he'd be like, that's him, like, and I'm like yeah, <laughs> and so he's like, nah, call him, call him, call him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny, but. Yeah, like that's great. So like, how was that? And that was against high majors. So y'all yeah, had a very, majors. yeah, like a very high, like a, like a, what was it six, seven high major games in a row? Yeah. To start the season, mm -hmm. and like regardless, like I don't know. I think like you got to think. Obviously, you want to win games, but in that like you're not going in thinking like, all right, I need like I need to win right now. But like you're thinking like, bro, I kill like I'm playing on I'm playing in front of NBA dudes right now. Like yeah. like this is like my opportunity to kill. So it's like. I feel like you did exactly what you needed to do and just like killed against the teams that mattered. Yeah, you know what I mean, because like me, like, you knew you was gonna face double teams and triple teams. Triple teams. Yeah, I got triple team all conference. Players. These teams ain't scouting, are, are they? Really? Yeah. Yeah. No. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, like high majors, like Whoa, really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because yeah, no, that is true. Against they, me, they, 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 they don't, don't want to get move. upset. Yeah, because I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I thought that's kind of what I went into with the high major shit. Like I, I'm thinking, like, all right, it's gonna be one on one. I'm gonna get my shit off. Literally, the first I'll never forget the first play against Georgetown. I'm thinking I catch the ball, it's me and Marcus Derrickson, make a move on him, boom, boom, boom. I get to the cup, before I go up, like I just give up like a little pump fake, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Just like to kind of gather. I'm thinking it's gonna be like one-on-one. -on -one. I pump fake, I see four motherfuckers over me like this. <laughs> I said, oh my God, they all crash down on top of me. Literally the whole game, they just like tripled. So like literally, like, even with the high major, just because, um, I mean, I produced all, uh, most of the points for the team, so. Yeah, no, exactly. I was averaging what? I was averaging 36, I think, like 36 and 12. 36 and 12. And I was shooting like, like 60. I think nine. And then like by 16, I think he was at like 29.8 or something like that. Yeah, Trey like Young was at like, like 10. Yeah, 10 rebounds. And so you're doing this against all high majors and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, Virginia Tech, everything like like nationally ranked teams. Like, yeah, I got a lot of, I got a lot of loves, especially out of that, just from, like from the coach staff and all that. It was, it, it felt good going from Oakland and not playing yeah, at all. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. And like, then leading the nation and scoring. Like, literally, like, all I would, I would, like, look at, like, my phone and Twitter or some shit. And, like, literally, I'll see some shit. Or, like, people just talking, like, like um, scouts or, like, uh, commentators and stuff. And they're like, yo, how the fuck did Oakland let him leave? Exactly. I and that's literally what I'm saying. Like, like, yeah, how like, did like, he not play there? Why didn't they give him a chance? Yeah, like, yeah, so, like, literally, that's all you hear. Like, literally, everybody's saying that. So, like, oh, it was like, all right. But it was, it's, it was, um, it was a dope experience, man. Um, it brought like a lot, especially it brought like a lot of national attention to the, the HBCU world. Definitely. So, yeah, so just being there, getting like getting NBA guys into the gym. So like I, NBA scouts coming to HBCUs to watch me right. play and stuff. So like it was, it was definitely fun. It was a dope experience. It was very humbling and just I'm just kind of like glad I was able to just weather the storm, you know? Because I mean, with the basketball shit, man. I mean, I, I'm human too. You feel me? So like I have my ups and downs. Like shit isn't always sweet. I'm yeah. never on a go. Like no, like. Yeah, like how do it's you balance, a roller coaster. Like, you know, how do you balance like life, life and basketball, where truthfully you just gotta keep rolling. Even like HBCU and you just dealing with relationships rolling, and all that, like. No, that's that's what I realized. Like you just gotta keep rolling. Like you get knocked down, bro. You gotta get up. Yeah. You get knocked down again. Get up again, bro. Just keep doing it. Like it's like it's inevitable. If you keep getting up, you're gonna find a way, you know. So that's kind of yeah, what was it was. Dope, like yeah. college, yeah. It yeah. was due. Like you was due to do that. So. You know, you have a great year. Now you throw your name. Was it was it even the portal back then? 
Yeah. It, that, was like, that was like, yeah. yeah. So you throw your name in the portal and you have arguably every coach in the country blowing up your phone. Like, out that. You're on the phone. I'm like, you on Xbox. You're like, hold on. Kansas State calling. <laughs> Answer the phone. Hold on. Uh, NC State's calling. Like, bro, like, yeah. everywhere. Memphis, UCLA, Arizona uh, State. I'm not going to lie. I had every school except for Duke, UNC, and who am I missing? Yeah, Kentucky. Kentucky. So Duke, no. so the blue. You got yeah. Kansas? Yeah. So you have one Kansas of called, they so you are. have one of the blue. That's like you know what I mean? Like that's sick that you're coming from a low major, worst school in the country, to nation's leading scorer for a majority of the season, mm-hmm. and now every school in the country wants you and you couldn't and you couldn't get on the floor. You wanna hear some shit? Yeah. Oakland all for me. And Oakland probably wanted you back. Of Oakland all Oakland, Oakland all for me, yeah. Same coach? Yeah, fuck them. Yeah. I think I remember you telling Telling yeah, me that him, he was on Xbox, like Oakland calling, like I ain't answering or something like that. Nah, like, um, I was talking to my boy. Cause my boy had just, he, I forgot what happened. Like he had a good game or something. He decided oh. to go pro, or something like that. He, I think, he, I think it's when he signed his pro contract. Cause this is the off season. Okay. So I, I hit him up, like yo, like good. it's my boy Jalen, you know, it's my, my brother. I'm like yo, like oh good shit, bro. Like proud of you. Yeah, and then like he's like yeah. By the way, Campy was like bro, like if you want to come back, like you know everything. I said tell Open Campy, arms. tell Campy. I said kiss my. Ass, yeah, yeah, no. You don't owe them nothing. No. And then, you know what I mean? That's why that's why you said, like, you got the last laugh, so. Yeah, nah. I mean, it's, it, honestly, I wouldn't even say it, it's no, like, no, um, hard feelings or anything, like, you know no, what I mean? I, but I'm just, I'm very prideful. And that's kind of why, um, really, that's that's kind of why I didn't stick it out at A&T, because I was still on the fence. A&T was still, they were still, they had a shot. Like, I like I told them, like, yo, I'm, I'm basically filling out the market. I'm going to see what's up. I'm going to see what it is. Like, you know, I just want to see, like, Right, but I'm not saying I'm leaving. I just want to basically explore. See so your options. Yeah. Which, so should, which, which, if a coach genuinely like cares for you and like yeah. genuinely like he wants the best for you, you should be okay with that. Yeah, but if that's selfish if if they don't feel that way. What happened was once that happened, uh, I guess egos and stuff came into play for as far as the coaches and he started trying to go behind my back and like down recruit me to like coaches. And so he was talking to other coaches saying I can't play at this level and stuff, and they're looking at him like. Like they, they're pulling up the analytics, like all right, against all power fives, he averaged thirty five <laughs> and fucking ten, like and shot and shooting that sixty percent for the season. And coaches know that though. Yeah, coaches, so like yeah, coaches know like how. But they like what, what he t- he ended up speaking to the coach who recruited me at Oakland. The coach who recruited me at Oakland ended up leaving after my first okay. year. So like we're still cool. Like that's my guy. But yeah. like my second year, I basically I didn't have the guy who recruited me in there to vouch for me. So that's okay. kind of what kind of fucked up my second year too. So he was telling the guy who recruited me at Oakland basically all this stuff, and then the guy hit me up like yo like motherfucker talking like you can't play like blah blah like it, like it got back like I'm like yo like so pretty much once that happened I was on like I, I'm prideful and like I can't I'm not a dude oh. who can send your face to be it fake it, it doesn't make sense for you to go to a and to back to Oakland for your grad year yeah that no, oh, no 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 he wasn't at Oakland no more he, oh, he been, like, oh before that no okay, I'm saying yeah. it didn't like as far as me going back to A&T like a coach was gonna down recruit me to other people so oh, like I'm not about sense. to come back yeah. and help you especially not get another contract. Year. yeah I'm like I'm not about to help you get like this is how like you're doing and you should be vouching and you feel me if you really truthfully want the best for me and then they started doing other like asshole shit they wouldn't pay i had needed one class to graduate they wouldn't pay for the class really a bunch of stuff like that so i had to pay for the class myself i had to do all that stuff but you graduated from north carolina A&T. yep okay yeah so that's how i got the grad you're going into the fall and then um with the fall with the the recruitment process um truthfully it was it was more than basketball for me because you gotta be, you gotta be careful, especially when you're in a grad year, because you're, you're your one shot. year. Yeah, you got one. So you can go in there. If shit doesn't go well the first couple weeks, like literally, they can just throw you in, like fuck them. We got them for a year. That's and they just, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? So it was more so about um, just getting to a place to where, for one, the trust between the coach and I and the relationship was very strong. Okay. And Lato, like me and Lato to this day are like as close That's as the head coach. Head coach head head ball. Ball. He's the, the most amazing dude ever, bro. Like if you ever talk like Lato, he's, he's dope. Dope as hell. And, and with the recruitment, every coach always wanted to talk X's and O's with me about basketball. I don't think me and Lato ever had one basketball conversation talk about the recruitment. Life. He life. called me like, oh, how's everything? Like, you know what I'm saying? We'll just talk about life, this and that. So it was like, I walked into a situation to where I knew coming out of the pool, I would be a better basketball player but i'll also be a better man because i'll be learning from my head coach you feel me like that's that's a, like another father figure you know what i'm saying so like 
even to like this day like it's just like i see somebody walk a bank on i'm going through anything we talk like i used to go into the office in the and just sit down with him i've never been like that with a coach like i would dead go into the office and just sit down with later on we would just talk about life and he just give me like what he knows you know he's, he's experienced right. a lot and that shit that it meant the world to me bro so that's kind of where DePaul, that's how DePaul went out the whole recruitment process over like all the other yeah, schools. Yeah, no, yeah, because, I mean, DePaul isn't a, your ideal spot, like, mm -hmm. draft-wise, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. oh, like, I'm going to go to DePaul, like, it's not, it's not a... Yeah, like, it used, used to be, right now, it's just, it's on a re, it's on a, yeah, a build-up now. But now it's, it's getting back to getting a lot of top recruits yeah, again. No, no, Paul, no, no. Paul's going to be a lot of, hopefully a lottery yeah. this year. That was the other big that was with you yep. there, right? Paul, he's, he bumped up to like, I think like, 17 or yeah, something in the mock he was a beast, yeah man. so like he's, he's like 17 18 in the mock draft right now and then they got romeo over there right now you got charlie at point guard oh, from uh yeah. where is he romeo uh, weems he, no, he was like the dude charlie what from charlie kansas. went to kansas yeah or cal did he go to cal first he went to cal then cal, kansas, kansas and then, yep. yeah i remember charlie moore right yep. from chicago and then um you got marquis um he's over there. he's top one of the top 100 too he committed to kansas and then decommitted came to DePaul. okay um so yeah, yeah no so, they're definitely moving yeah. in the right direction what q rich went there Q Rich. I mean, it's that that list is is insane. You got Q Rich, Rod Strickland, um, you got uh, Kevin Edwards, you got Sammy Mejia from okay, out here. Yeah, you yeah. got um, Mark Aguirre. Um, yeah, and that was like er, what, like George Mikan, late nineties, early thousands, and then yeah, even prior George to Mikan, like literally the wall, like of the pool, like just like all, oh, the, yeah, it's, all the portraits it's, and it's shit. It's yeah, huge. Like the list, like the names is is too much. You got a bunch of Hall of Famers, all that. So yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's good. So. Obviously, at DePaul, you showed that you could maintain at that level. Yeah, I had a What you average, like 13 and 7? 14? 14, like 14 and 7, I think. 14 and 14 7. 14 and 7, shot, shot like 60%. Over, yeah, almost, shot like 40 from the 3, 40 something from the yeah, 3. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like you proved that you could, uh, you know, obviously maintain at that level. Yeah, the you Big East. You belong yeah. to be there in the Big East. We went, what we go to that St. John's game. Would yeah. you have 25? I think I have more than that. Yeah, 28? 28? 28? Like 28 and like oh. 10, 9, 10. Oh, yeah, Did I have a double double? I, I don't know. I think you did. No, nah, you might you might be one short. Yeah, I think I, I don't remember, like nine. But I remember we was there. That shit was lit. Cut the dunk on the break, but like even that game was dope. Yeah. I, I went there the year before mm -hmm. to watch my boy Dez. He was a D two, and they played uh, mm -hmm. they played St. John's, and we sat like right behind his bench. But just even like those games are lit. But like and that was an exhibition game. Yep. And it was lit. And then the uh, your game, like Big East game, ESPN. Mm -hmm. Bro, that game was crazy. That game was nuts. The atmosphere. St. John's, that was, that was a personal for me, too. Because St. John's during the recruitment, too. St. John's had a good chance. Like, at first, I didn't even want to, like, I kind of just took the visit because I'm a New York kid. And being that I'm a New York kid, I have to visit St. John's. Like, it's just some things that you have to do. You understand? So, like, I just took the visit. Shit, but yeah. when I went on the visit, like, I was talking to Maddie. Like, you know, I respect to Maddie and stuff. But, um, Maddie, he's not the head coach. You know, Chris wasn't there. Chris Mullen wasn't there. No, he wasn't, yeah. And then the whole recruitment process maddie's calling me so like literally i'm in the car one day and like i'm going to get something to eat with like aaron and stuff and then maddie's like talking to me and i just like had him like yo maddie listen i'm like everything you're saying to me i understand i was like but i don't give a fuck so i'm like you're like you're an assistant i was like at the end of the day chris controls all the minutes i'm like this shit not doing nothing for me i'm like all right so if y'all guys want to talk to me i'm like bro like i'm not talking to the assistant coach like this is my last year so basically you could cut me take me off the board and i just like hung up wow boom I hung up literally like I kid you not we could call Aaron and ask him right now like a minute and like 20 seconds later my phone's ringing it's a fucking number from Cali I answer it hey you feel me it's Chris Moore Chris Moore yeah, like, of course fuck of course oh, oh, so then like that that kind of just rubbed me the wrong way so when I went when I went to play every time I played St. John's I was off of blood every time I played St. John's how did you do at your place against them another like 30 ball really Max Max had like 48 that game that was senior night. League? That was senior night. Max, um, two way, two way with the Bulls, oh, but then he man. ended up tearing his ACL this year. Really? Yeah. So, but um, so that that was senior night. We were down by like 15, 20, and then me and Max just lit them the fuck up in the second half. Yeah, we, we wasn't losing oh. on senior night. Yeah. So, what honors did you did you receive like in the Big East? You got a weekly. You got a weekly one, right? I got a couple. Yeah, I think yeah, I wanted to like, like, yeah, like weekly. weekly. Whatever, like, I didn't get any season on. Um, nah. Okay. And huh, then. So. Thousand point scoring college. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right from obviously A and T, Oakland, and DePaul. I got it in two years. At A and T. No, DePaul. I'm saying yeah, yeah. yeah I Oakland. got. It. I, you I, didn't even need Oakland to get it. Yeah. I what, probably, would you I probably, probably get like, like six, seven hundred that year at A and T? Maybe a little less. Probably more. Really? 
No, uh, no. Was it 30? We won 25 games, lost like something. Probably what, like 37 games? I say like 18 points a game. Eh, probably no. Probably like six, seven. Yeah, yeah close, probably about yeah. right. Yeah. So, and then DePaul averaged 13, 14 a game. So that's a thousand. So coming out of DePaul, what's your like? What what's your men's like mental at this point in the draft process? Like, were you working out with teams? Where you know, did you have a legit chance? Like, and how did it like affect you? Like, not getting drafted, and you know what I mean. Like, and having to take this undrafted route, like a lot of guys do, to get to the league. Mm -hmm. How was that? Like, was that in your plans? Was that something you were okay with, or like, you know? Um, I I dealt with enough adversity to where it really didn't even bother me. I kind of okay. I've always been in situations where all like chips are stacked against me, you know. So right. I was comfortable, and I, I've been comfortable with just being the underdog. So truthfully, I didn't, I didn't really care for it. So it was like whatever way I have to do it, right. I'm gonna do it that way. But I'm gonna end up at the same place, you know. And it just builds character. So um, I worked out with who? Who I worked out with? I worked out with the Kings. Kings. I worked out with the Nets. Yeah. Um, the Hornets workout didn't. I didn't go through with the Hornets workout. I was supposed to fly in. Then I was talking to like the Bucks, the Bulls. Um, the, the magic, uh, the but the Nuggets went before. Okay, I worked yeah. out with the Mavericks. That summer after DePaul, you're working out with a bunch of NBA teams. You listed a few, and what happens? You know, decision to play in the summer league to not, and then ultimately you went overseas to Lithuania. So what? Like what went into that decision and? Just talk like how was that experience over there? Like with from Brentwood, New York, Long Island, experience the city. Obviously, you've been different parts of America, mm -hmm. and now you're going to live in Lithuania to play basketball. You know what I mean? To get paid for doing something you love. So like, how was that? Like, um, it was it was bittersweet, man. It was it was a it was an experience. At first, I guess just like it was just everything was happening so fast, and just the thought of being away for ten months. You know, going to play basketball in a foreign country, it was just like it was. It was scary in a sense, just because it's just like it's you know, it's just it's real life. Like you know, it's my career, but it's like yeah. I'm away from everything. You're the on time your own, difference. You're living, yeah. The, what time, was the time difference, difference is the biggest thing. Eight hours, you know. So like that's like the hardest thing about it. So it was just like that was the thing. So yeah, yeah but um. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people say they want to play overseas, but they don't know what it, it's, what, it's it, what goes into it. Like, oh yeah, I want to play pro. I want to play. You pro. gotta be like. like uh, you you have to be so in tune with yourself mentally to do it, man. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough just from like a, a just a mental standpoint. Like you can't be a mental ninja and expect to just be okay over there. Like that shit, that shit will eat you alive. You know. So, but it's it, it was dope because um like I in the past like I've had problems like kind of being like I, I don't want to say being codependent, but like just like my surroundings kind of affected me a lot just you know people around me just like you know different people's energy and stuff and i kind of like banked on other people's happiness at times just to get through it so like me being by myself out there forced me to really be in tune myself change and, your, and change your like, whole like way become of, like, I'm my own best friend so like truthfully like it just i grew so much while i was out there man like it's just insane like it's like you're forced to grow up and like you you see like just like how pivotal especially being over there how pivotal it was for me just because like even now like even when i'm home like you guys know, like I'm home and whenever y'all hit me up, like if we go to play football or something like that, like I'll go. Other than that, I'm in, I'm still like chilling by myself. It's just I'm yeah. just so used to it. And I'm just so like comfortable with my own, yeah. uh, just my own company now, man. And oh, it's yeah. just a dope to like be there, like at that point. So that was like kind of the biggest thing I took out of it. Obviously, I became a better basketball player, but just truthfully, I just learned a lot of life lessons by being away from everything. So. But the, the competition level is amazing, especially in Lithuania. It's one of the top leagues uh, overseas, overseas, super physical, right? yeah. Super physical, and I was playing Champions League as well, which is international. So um, it, was, it, was, it was a dope experience. You playing against NBA players every night. And, and the reason why I didn't take the G League route is because it was a Champions League offer. So Champions League, this is a lot better than that, you know, especially yeah. money-wise and then competition level and then just notoriety from the European market and other than that. So that was... um. That was pretty much that. That, that kind of was the the hump uh, into getting into the next. Um, what's it saying? That was kind of the hump into just making that decision as opposed to the G League. How you doing that?
<laughs> we're obviously shooting something. Oh, right now? <laughs> no, are you serious? <laughs> you can probably put this in. <laughs> no, I'm saying leave it in. <laughs> you don't see a mic, a camera, nothing. <laughs> How's the beach? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah, no, you were talking about the level over there and uh, just like the... Like from, even from Division One to Pro, how oh, how better is it? Um, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a huge difference, especially making that jump. Um, biggest thing I can say the 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 further you go up, especially in Europe, because it's it's a different brand of basketball than we're used. There's no isolation. Like it's five on five. Like yeah. it's like you're playing basketball. You know what I mean? So like your your IQ and your just knowledge of the game has to be so sharp. Cause like it's like everything over there is based off margin of error. The players who play in Euro League are the players who can focus for 40 minutes and not make errors. Like that's the difference between everything. It's it's such a slight. It's like it's it's so little because the player, the talent level is the makes same. A big difference. Yeah. But that's like what puts you over the hump. So yeah. it's just like learning that, and then the speed of the game picks up, and it's just I. It's like IQ, bro. It's like on some. If I'm like a half a step out of position, I'm going to pay. Yeah. yeah. So it's like truthfully. They uh, they uh they they grow up being taught the game a different way yep. than us. So mm -hmm. like, I feel like that's like the main Ball movement, is the, hammer is the passes, of, Spanish pick and rolls. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's, it's a different. It's a lot of action. Like the, it's, it's, if you go, if you get the opportunity to go play in Europe and you go play in Europe, it's like, especially when I come home now, the game is so slow here. So it's right. like being that I play over there and I see everything happening so fast and so down, sharp. Down, down. Now it's like, when I come home, like people thought it's it was so like, People thought it was it was like a coincidence that like during the the summer last year I averaged like thirty on the circuit between summer everything leagues, yeah, yeah like yeah. dude Dykeman and everything so it's just like it's one on one and it's so like I see everything developing before it happens because I, I see it happen at such a high rate and such a high level and I'm forced to be um, attentive and just uh, making the right reads every possession at a professional level yeah. against professional athletes you know and they're not they're not more athletic than you no, are. No, no. They're not, no, they're basketball just, is mental. Basketball they understand the mental. game, like, they, they, literally, that's all it is, like, they kill you mentally, like, I had a 30, like, a 36-year-old dude on my team named Joko, he was killing me, bro, like, the first, like, two, three weeks, he was fucking killing me, bro, so it was, and, like, I didn't know what it was, but he would just beat me up, like, mentally, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying, so, like, it's, like, back door, here, mm. see the next play, he's making the next pass, over this, he's coming down the screen, faking the screen down, and, like, I'm getting fucked up, it was so bad, Jack, I, I went home, and I watch film on my teammate. <laughs> I watch film. I study film just on him for a whole night. Practice. I'm like, yo, how does he keep getting? I started peeping like, like, like his little, like, just like, um, his mannerisms and his body language before he does stuff and all that. Like, I did, like, I, I scouted my teammate, and then I went to practice the next day and I busted his ass for like three weeks. And then like that was just, but that's what, that's what it made it takes, me better. Bro. Yeah, no, it, it completely made me better because like, for one, that's just like, I'm a competitor, you know. Oh, absolutely. So like, yeah, but that shit is it, dope, man. And now how is it, obviously, you know, you left there. Yep. And now you're in Macedonia. So what's, you know, how's the difference living-wise, at least? Living-wise? similar, right? Um, level? Uh, fairly. I would say yeah. Lithuania is a little bit better the than Macedonia. Okay. Um, the Macedonia League's in uh, the Adriatic. Okay. So it's still good. Like, ABA 1, like, uh, we should be playing ABA 1 this year. Okay. That's a really, really good league. So that's, like, Euro League team, Euro Cup team and stuff. So it'll be up there, like... It probably be, probably like, I don't want to say a little better in Champions League. I'm not 100 percent too sure, but it, it, it's definitely gonna be up there. With yeah, the so it's, it might be right there. Like you got Red Star in there. Uh, there's a lot of like killers in there, man. But um, how's living out there? It's compared to Lithuania. Lithuania is a lot more traditional. So um, it's more like America. It's it's a little bit more modern. Okay. It's it's, it's more it's, it's more. a kind of like a more youthful. Oh no no, Lithuania yeah, is that's traditional. What I'm saying. Macedonia is yeah. like yeah, it's kind of like more just uh, i don't want to say americanized but it's it's like very youthful so it's okay. like yeah that's it's, cool though it's so closer it's probably better yeah because it's, it's basically north greece so you know like okay. it's, it's up to date with a lot of stuff so yeah you gotta travel until when you go out there you gotta yeah. go like somewhere in greece what's that one like on the water that crystal water? santorini yeah yeah yeah, yeah santorini like, yeah I had, I had a trip before theaters yeah that's that's my favorite place santorini athens is dope uh mike knows greece is dope and i got to see especially because like playing international like i, I bounced all over europe so I've touched pretty much every part of Europe. It's dope. Yeah, that's, that's an experience. So, I mean, that's really where you're at now. Now you're going back mm -hmm. in a couple weeks. So, I mean, 
obviously we're gonna you know keep in touch with everything with your progress and stuff like that and you know what I mean like everyone will put uh, you know his social media down low Instagram Twitter and uh, you know y'all can follow his success and his path with uh, Appreciate you coming on. We're definitely oh, yeah. gonna have you back on. Yes, sir. You know what I mean. So um, yeah. So uh, best of luck to you when you leave soon. And I think we're playing football tomorrow, right? Or yeah, at least so. today. Today at six. I think that's probably who's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm uh, on the field. You haven't six. been around. I'm with it. I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, I'm with it though. At I'm six, probably you rusty. can do that. So, uh, all right, man. All right, all right, well. well.